On Saturday, July 22nd, researchers in South Korea published a paper announcing the synthesis of what could be the world's first ambient temperature superconductor. For the uninitiated, a superconductor is to electricity what a completely frictionless surface would be to mechanics. Unlike the conductors and semiconductors from which electrical devices are presently made, a superconductor would offer no resistance to a current flowing through it. That could mean, among other things, faster microchips, cheaper medical scanners, better electric motors, the ability to transmit electricity over long distances with no losses and more. If it uses electricity or magnetism, superconductivity can improve it. And, unlike frictionless surfaces, superconductors actually exist. The first to be discovered more than 100 years ago was mercury, though it only becomes a superconductor when chilled to within a few degrees of absolute zero, or minus 273 degrees Celsius, the coldest temperature possible. Since then, scientists have found a handful of materials that are superconductive at slightly higher temperatures. Even these high-temperature superconductors, though, require cooling to far below freezing. That has limited their usability. The Korean researchers claim to have discovered a material that is a superconductor at room temperature, and indeed, up to around 127 degrees C. Even better, the material is made by combining copper, lead, phosphorus, and sulfur, all of which are relatively abundant and cheap. It has all the ingredients, in other words, of a breakthrough. The only missing element in this happy story, at least at the time of writing, is replication. Some preliminary computer simulations by other researchers, including at Lawrence Berkeley, National Lab in America and Shenyang National Laboratory in China have suggested that there might be something to the claims, though the physics of high-temperature superconductors, unlike that of the ultra-cold sort, is not well understood. Some Chinese researchers have reported that LK99 may be a superconductor, but only when chilled to far below zero degrees C. Privately, some researchers express considerable skepticism, and the field has a checkered history. Even as the Korean claims were stirring up excitement, a paper published last year claiming a similar breakthrough was being retracted. It is thus too early to declare a revolution. But scientists around the world are racing to test LUC-99. Confirmation or debunking should not be long in coming.